It's becoming more and more of a pain in the ass to play your older consoles. Do you even have a TV with standard definition inputs anymore? Sure, you can get a cheapo upscaler, but those come with their own set of problems. Consoles at the tail end of the standard definition generation are a particularly tragic case because they're capable of so much, but they're so limited by these stupid cables. The guys over at Eon have developed this, the GCHD, which gives you the highest native resolution possible out of your GameCube. This is the cleanest footage of Melee you will ever see. I've used this cheapo upscaler in the past, and don't get me wrong, for what it is, it works just fine. For $40, it gets your retro consoles onto your HD TVs. For that price though, there are a few problems, the most glaring of which is the aspect ratio. It's not a smart device. It doesn't read what's coming into it to determine what to do with the signal. It just stretches everything. Some TVs or monitors can squish it back to 4x3, but most can't. It also forces the signal to be 720p or 1080p. This is fine for older systems because they're so low resolution that I'll just take whatever I can get. But the GameCube is natively 480, and this little cheap thing isn't gonna do that good of a job stretching it out. I consider the GameCube to be one of the best console generations. The N64 was 3D in its infancy, so games weren't quite where they needed to be. In the GameCube generation, we got to see a far more experienced Nintendo. Even third-party developers had learned the 3D ropes by this point. In this generation, we got the better Mario, we got the better Smash Brothers, we got the better Rogue Squadron. No, they gave Mario glorified cleanup work. How is that better? I wouldn't know a good game if it hit you in the face. It's unfortunate that a lot of these classic games are stuck in this weird era between standard and high definition. It makes hooking up these classic consoles way more of a pain than it should be. With the GameCube, upscalers like the one that I have or even the standard composite ports on the TV will mess up the contrast. Everything looks dark and muddy. Not to mention the GameCube is only outputting 480i out of its composite port. That's an interlaced signal. The GameCube is capable of 480p, or progressive scan. Not every game supports this, but most of the big ones do. The difference between interlaced and progressive scan is pretty significant. Progressive scan transmits an image one line at a time in sequence. Interlaced only shows every other line and the frames alternate between the two. Every single frame is essentially a half frame. You're not getting all of the data at once. Obviously, this is not ideal, and in some cases you'll even see noticeable scan lines. Nintendo does have a first party solution to this. Component cables for your GameCube. You can find them on eBay for 250 bucks. Yikes. And even when they were brand new, they were still very expensive because there was a chip in there doing something. This is where the GCHD comes in. It plugs into the composite and digital output of your GameCube and farts out an HDMI signal. It only uses the composite port for stabilization. The digital output of the GameCube is very delicate. And if the connection isn't stable, it could short your GameCube. It happened to Metal Jesus with a cheap HDMI adapter. You should never unplug the cables from the digital output of the GameCube while it's on. That's just asking for trouble. But I did a whole bunch of times while making this video, and you know what? There was no fire, so we're all good. Also, some later model GameCubes don't even have this digital output port, so if you're thinking of getting this device, make sure you have that port on your GameCube. Immediately after popping on the GCHD, I noticed the much sharper edges. It's a night and day difference when you compare the two in person. If I hadn't seen it in person, I probably never would have known I needed it. Now come on, that control's way better. Right, you know, I'm not gonna talk about it anymore. The first time I played it at too many games, and when I saw footage online, I noticed the much higher contrast and brighter colors, which is also a major plus. This is the best image you will ever get directly out of a GameCube. I did notice that the edges of the window boxing were vibrating pretty heavily. It shows up a lot more in the game capture than it did on screen, so this isn't really that big of a deal. I also noticed that the volume got a little bit lower, but that's not a big deal either. 
There is a settings menu. Navigating it is very strange. You could point any IR remote at it and it'll sync itself to it very easily. There are a lot of super technical settings, but you shouldn't really need to play with any of them. The default settings are just fine for most people. This little device makes your GameCube games look beautiful. There's no doubt about that, but is it worth the price tag? This thing is a whopping $150. That price tag makes sense when you consider the alternative is the official Nintendo component cables, which are way more expensive and not as useful as a straight up HDMI port. Personally, I'd be willing to put up with the lower quality visuals in most cases. $150 is a lot of money. Here's what I'm not willing to put up with though, a stretched image. That is one of the biggest selling points for me. Having those nice, crisp visuals and a forced 4x3 image is incredible. Now you're seeing the image in the way it was originally intended. The assets aren't stretched out. Stuff like this is more noticeable to me when I'm playing something like the original Super Mario Bros. or Sonic 3. 2D games where your inputs feel really weird when the image is that much bigger horizontally. But if you're diehard into Melee, having a stretched image is going to kill it for you. There are a handful of GameCube games that support widescreen, and the GCHD has a 16x9 setting for this, but I wasn't able to get that to work. I think it has to talk to the TV, and I was running the GameCube through my Elgato, so maybe there was a compatibility issue? Not a lot of games support this feature anyway, and all it really does is stretch the image short ways so that your TV or upscaler can restretch it long ways. It's not gonna give you a higher quality image. It's not gonna magically give you a 720p image. It's useful if you don't have one of these devices and your TV is stretching it to 16 by nine anyway, because this will make sure that the image is stretched correctly, sort of like anamorphic. Another major benefit is input lag. If your TV is the one doing the upscaling from composite to HD, then you might experience some major input lag. This device takes care of that conversion so that there is no noticeable input lag whatsoever. Playing Melee feels great. Absolutely destroying AJ at the Eon booth at Too Many Games the other weekend never felt better. It almost doesn't matter that we were playing on Big Blue and he was Pichu and I told him I was gonna go hard. I don't know why he wasn't going hard. He, for months he was talking up his Smash game telling me how much better he was than me. How am I supposed to let him live that down? I told him I wouldn't before we Bob, win. you know that was the only way you were going to win. Shut your damn mouth. How am I supposed to let him live that down? Oh. Talking about Smash game for me. That's the hard piece I need. The GCHD is a very specialty item. I recommend it for people who maybe play a lot of Melee, maybe people who speedrun games on consoles, or maybe people who just have a lot of money and want the best visuals possible. For most people, settling for an upscaler is probably fine. Just know that your Sonic Adventure 2 battle isn't going to look as crisp as it could. Or, you know, just play this shit on your Wii. Or just wait for the inevitable GameCube games on Switch Online, but it sounds like we're gonna be waiting a long time for that. For the absolute highest resolution possible right now is also the Dolphin emulator, but that comes with its own whole slew of problems. In some cases, it's so high resolution that the textures look weird as hell. And if you don't already use the Dolphin emulator, you'd probably want the physical hardware anyway. For the absolute best gaming experience, physical is always better. It's just a pain in the ass to set up. I mean, look at what we just spent the last 10 minutes talking about and tell me that setting up retro consoles isn't a pain in the ass. So what do you guys think about getting the best picture out of your GameCube? Are there games on here that you wanna see in that nice, crisp 480p that doesn't sound crisp? Listen, for the GameCube, it's very crisp. Anyway, leave it in the comments below, at me on Twitter, all this other social media garbage. I would love to see something like this on the Dreamcast. They do make a mod for the N64 that I would like to get my hands on, but it's $400 and I don't wanna do that. Also, special thanks to my neighbor Dan who dropped by because I was in his video this week. Don't forget to check out over uh, my channel where Bob and I talked about VR Toad, Captain Toad, Toad, Captain Tra Treasure Tracker, Captain Toad, VR, okay. It's going up the day this video goes up and if it's not there, just subscribe to his channel and wait. But it should be there by the time you're seeing this. Anyway, we got new videos all of the time. Our schedule is in a pinned tweet on our Twitter. There's also live streams on twitch.tv slash wolfden where I've been streaming Pokemon Yellow recently. 
And there's also a live podcast on Wednesday nights right here on YouTube where we talk to you guys. And of course, Amazon links to everything I always talk about in the description below. Thank you guys for hanging out. Thank you for being here. But as always, the most important things you can do is subscribe and share this video with a friend. A friend who also maybe you play Double Dash with. Maybe you play Melee with. Thank you guys very much. You guys have yourselves a very good week. All right, take it all back. This game ain't that good.